Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're going to take a look at how to apply the comparison test for improper integrals. We're usually going to use this when the improper integral that we're given is too difficult to evaluate directly by finding an antiderivative. And if you take a look at your function, x divided by x to the fourth plus one, that doesn't seem to fit any of our basic integration methods. Now what we're going to find is as long as you know the background information, the work here for determining if that improper integral is convergent or divergent is pretty minimal. So first, let's make sure you understand the comparison test. It involves two functions, f of x, which is bigger than g of x. Graphically, that means the graph of f is above the graph of g. And provided both f and g are non-negative, so they're maybe equal to zero, but greater than zero as well, then we reach this conclusion. The area beneath g of x, well, that should be less than the area beneath f, since f is the bigger function. Now, there's only two conclusions here that give you definitive answers. I like to write it with the words bigger and smaller, since I find that's a little bit more intuitive for my students. So we're going to think of f of x as the bigger integral here, or the integral involving f of x, and the integral involving g of x, that's the smaller integral. Your two conclusions say, if the bigger improper integral is convergent, then the smaller one must be convergent. The other conclusion is if the smaller one is divergent, then the bigger one must be divergent. All right, those are the only two definitive conclusions with the comparison test for improper integrals. The other thing that we're going to use, which you likely have covered already, is this thing called the p-integral. And it's an improper integral from 1 to infinity for the function 1 over x to a power. And the power, that's where the name p comes from. That's our exponent there. Now this is a really nice result because we can easily determine if the p integral converges or diverges just by based off the power there. So we have 1 over x to a power. If the power is bigger than 1, this improper integral is convergent. And if the power is less than or equal to 1, this improper integral is divergent. So very clear criteria for when the p integral converges or diverges. All right. Now we're ready to get to our problem and to start by applying the comparison test, you need to have an idea if your function leads to a convergent or divergent improper integral. Because if you think your improper integral is convergent, well, we should look for a bigger improper integral that we know is convergent. And likewise, if we think our improper integral is divergent, we should look for a smaller improper integral that is divergent. All right, now, how do we have that idea of knowing if we think our improper integral might be convergent or divergent? I like to do what's called a large x estimation. All right, so what we're going to do is take a look at our function, which is x divided by x to the fourth plus 1. And we're going to imagine what happens when x becomes really big. Notice why that makes sense. We have an improper integral from 1 to infinity. Your values of x approach infinity. And approaching infinity, those are very big values, or large. So we're going to say this is approximately equal to, for large x, so in other words, when x is really big, think of x as being maybe like a million. Notice we have in the denominator x to the fourth. Now, if x is big, x to the fourth is way bigger. And then you add a 1 to that. That 1 hardly does anything when you have x as a really big number raised to the fourth power. So for large values of x, 
the denominator, we can just basically get rid of the one, that's insignificant. The denominator is basically x to the fourth. The numerator behaves just like x. And notice this simplifies to one over x cubed. Now, how do we make sense of this? Well, we want to think of that as the integral from one to infinity of one over x cubed. And notice this is a convergent p integral. Your power here for p is three. So this improper integral definitely is convergent. Now this does not prove that our improper integral is convergent, but what it suggests is we might think this is convergent because this estimation behaves like a convergent improper integral. How we make this precise is now that we have the idea that we think this is convergent, now we wanna look for a bigger improper integral that we know converges. And we can do that with one simple trick for most problems. We're dealing with fractions a lot and one way to make a fraction bigger is to make the denominator smaller. The other result, if we have a fraction, one way to make it smaller is to make the denominator bigger. Now this might seem complicated for functions, but this is really something as simple as let's say we have the fraction two over five. Well, this fraction is gonna be less than two over two. Notice I'm making my denominator smaller and I can make this fraction bigger than this fraction, two over six. So going in this direction, your denominator is smaller. Going in that direction, your denominator is bigger. So we're basically gonna use that idea here to see if we can find a bigger improper integral that we know is convergent. Now this might sound confusing, but the work is rather simple Notice we have a fraction here. We can make this fraction bigger by making that whole denominator smaller. So let's go ahead and work this out. The calculations are really simple. We have our function, x to the fourth plus one. And I'm going to make this denominator smaller by getting rid of the plus one. So we have the improper integral from one to infinity of x divided by x to the fourth. Notice here, just so you see it, this denominator has become smaller. So that's how we get that inequality. And notice what this reduces to, x divided by x to the fourth that reduces to the improper integral from one to infinity of one over x cubed. And that we know is a convergent p integral. So your value for p is three, which means that improper integral is convergent. And notice that is the bigger improper integral and what we can conclude from the comparison test is if the bigger improper integral is convergent, then the smaller, our improper integral, must be convergent as well. So the way we just write this up is we're gonna say our improper integral from one to infinity of x to the, divided by x to the fourth plus one we're gonna say this is convergent by the comparison test. And your work up there, that's what supports that. And if you take a look at the work compared to what you recently have done with your integration methods, this work is all pretty minimal. At this point in your Calc 2 course, the problems are more conceptually challenging 
than challenging in terms of lengthy calculations. So just make sure you're on top of all these ideas, what the comparison test says, the P integral, and more importantly, how you find bigger and smaller functions. So for this improper integral, we've determined this one is convergent. What the comparison test does not tell you is what the improper integral converges to. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video, all the little tips and tricks we're mentioning. If you're finding this useful, support the channel, like and subscribe.